My wife Janelle and I came to Monterey in 1953. I uh, studied Italian at, um, at the language school. And uh, at the time we were living in PG, and then I got permanent quarters for the Navy at La Mesa Village. Um, while we were there, uh, I bought a little Lambretta, and I'd go back and forth to the language school on my Lambretta, and uh, that worked for a while, and then I got tired of that. We, um, we decided in, uh, oh, about uh, two months before I graduated to look for a lot or sing in the, in the area uh, because we had no place to live when I retired and we were planning ahead. Janelle was from uh, Alabama and I was from upstate New York. Neither of us w was willing to go back to those places to re live when I retired. So <clears throat> we went looking for a place, a lot to build on or something, and especially in Carmel Valley. Well, Janelle on her own ran into a realtor named uh, Irene Baldwin. And uh, Irene uh, took us around several weekends, and she was uh, she was quite a psychologist. She stopped by this little farm in Carmel Valley and, and said, uh, uh, you kids don't mind waiting for a few minutes. I've got to go talk to the owner of this property. So she went in the house, and she left us there. We got out of the car, and we looked around, and when she came back in, she offhandedly said, well, uh, you know, that place is for sale. What'd you think of it? I said, well, it's too big. I don't need it. You know, this house is no good. Well, she said, I thought that's what you wanted. You want something with no value. You're looking for a lot. And, um, you know, anyway, the following night she called me at home and said, uh, by the way, um, what'd you think about that? Well, I said, I've already told you it's too big and so forth. And she said, well, um, why don't you think about it a little more? And, and, and I said, well, uh, for one thing, I said, the woman wanted too much money for it. She said, well, what do you think it would be a fair price? And I said, well, she wanted 40. I said, I wouldn't pay her a bit more than 30. I said, it's 10 acres. The lot's worth, you know, I said, 3,000 an acre. The house is worthless. I said, I wouldn't give her more than 30,000 for it. So the following day, she called me back and she said, she'll take 30,000. And I told my wife, I said, what do we do now? I said, me and my big mouth. My wife said, well, we better buy it. So we ended up buying it. And we lived on it um, when I came back from the Army in 1965. And um, we didn't sell it until 1974. But that was the story of how we got the farm. But before I, uh, that's how we got the farm. But before I got the farm, uh, we were still at the language school when we bought it, and I, um, I was leaving to go overseas. I didn't know where at the time, but Janelle said, before you go, uh, I wish you would have your portrait made. She said, I heard about a guy named Les Emery who has a good reputation, and I think you might like him if you don't mind seeing him and get your portrait made. And I said, well, I'll get mine made if you'll get, if you'll get yours made. So she said, okay. So we both went to see Les and uh, had our portraits made and this is what they look like. After Janelle and I both had our portraits made, Les and I uh, got into some conversations and he told me that he made it a habit of going at least once a year to various places in South America, especially in South America and sometimes to Europe. It would make special, uh, rather uh, uh, pencil sketches of some of the subjects and then come back and spend the, yes to the, the rest of the year painting them. For example, this is a sketch that he, he made of a woman in, um, in South America called Tia. But this was a, an oddity because he had her sketch, but he put it into a into wax in a griddle, and using a stylus, he drew her picture, and then the finished product 
was not a portrait. It was uh, it was a portrait, but it was uh, uh, it was like a, a a pencil thing. And and what you see is what you see, but you can see the remarkable uh, likeness to her. And uh, another one is uh, the the other with a, a little Mexican girl about 11 or 12 holding her uh, her baby brother in her arms and. Uh, you can see the pathos and the compassion and the love. And the thing is with the eyes, the um, he used to he had this picture among others at the gallery and at a gallery in Carmel. And every couple of weeks, somebody from the gallery would call him up and say, "Les, come down and touch up the eyes," because somebody thinking that the eyes were real would touch them, feeling that they were real. And he would have to come down every couple of weeks and, and touch them up. The, um, the most fascinating part about Les was that, not, not the most, I guess, but if his wife did not like a picture, he would destroy it. And uh, when Janelle had her portrait made, she saw this picture of a post office leaning up against the wall and and she said, gee, Les, I love that picture. And he casually remarked, he said, well, someday I'll give that to you, Janelle. And uh, that, that was it. So that was in 1954 when we had our portraits made that she admired the picture. In 1965, when I retired, I've been retired about two weeks, I got a call from Les. And he said, Roy, tell, uh, tell Janelle she can come in and pick up her picture whenever she wants to. So I told Janelle that Les had called and said for her to pick up the picture, and she said, what picture? So I said, well, I'll go in and I don't know anything about the story, so I'll go in and I'll pick up the picture and, and find out what picture he's talking about. So I went in and he handed me this picture of his town at a post office. And when I brought it home, of course, Janelle recognized right away what it was, but I thought it was fascinating that uh, that he would uh, remember after 11 years, especially since it was one of the pictures that his wife didn't like, and it was in the pile ready to be destroyed until Janelle said that she liked it. So apparently Janelle's liking the picture overrode his wife's sensitivity about his keeping it. So anyway, that's the story, and that's the story of, of Les. Um, what happened was that uh, he was a native of Virginia, his wife died, I believe, in 1991, and um, shortly thereafter, he moved back to Virginia, and uh, I think he died in 1998, I'm not quite sure, but uh, after his wife died, he uh, it was not the same home, so he, um, so he left and went back home and died, and that's the story.